All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, so I got a couple of comments here. Uh, first from Last Days 2024, and then a response from Roddick 1983. Before I read those comments, I want to share a verse with you. And I want you to keep this in mind as we have this uh, discussion. All right, so in Hebrews chapter 11, I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Anyways, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. All right, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So when we have faith, or I, maybe I should say when I have faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ I have hope that he will come and transform me into a immortal body an incorruptible body where I can have everlasting life without death without pain, without sorrow, without suffering, without sin of any sort. That's what I'm putting my hope into. Everlasting life. Alright, so I'm hoping that he'll come, that he will come. I know he will. That's why I have faith. And when he comes, I'll be transformed into this glorified body. That's what I'm putting my hope into. <clears throat> Right? I'm not putting my hope into a thousand bonus years. You know, that, that seems to like 99.9% .9 of the teachers today teach this idea. I'm not putting my hope into that at all. Right? <clears throat> and so I, I just want to, uh, I want to bring that up. If for anybody that's listening, Think about that. What are you putting your faith into? What are you are, What are you putting your hope into? Okay. So let's read these comments, starting with the uh, last days, 2024. And oh, I'm sorry. He, all he does is he quotes Second Peter chapter three. I can pull that up. Second Peter chapter three. With the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall here I, I'm not sure if I can screw this up here the, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought you to be in all holy conversations and godliness looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness how far does he want me to 14 wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless alright so um, yeah, when I uh, made this video yesterday, it was in regards to when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the earth will be destroyed by fire. The heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Just as this world was destroyed, or the old world, however you want to frame it. The old world was destroyed by water in the days of Noah. Now, this world is reserved to be destroyed by fire. Alright? <laughs> and, uh, so, I mean, it's pretty obvious, pretty simple. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise 
and the elements shall melt with fervent heat in the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up and it's it's quite interesting to me because when this happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven all the tribes of the earth will mourn right as I pointed out yesterday I believe it was that when Jesus comes in the clouds every eye shall see him and they also which pierced him in all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him all kindreds of the earth shall well all kindreds of the earth shall well why are they wailing and in Matthew 24 all the tribes of the earth will mourn why will all the tribes of the earth mourn Luke 21 men's hearts failing them for fear why are men's hearts failing them why are they having heart attacks men's hearts failing them for fear when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven why is this happening well it's pretty obvious isn't it it's because they know it's the end of this world all right it's gonna there's not gonna be any doubt about it the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God wherein the heavens being on a fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat all right now just keep that in mind keep that in mind as we go back to the comments here in Roderick's response Roderick 1983 says last days 2024 posting scripture you see in the text and other books we are in the new heaven and new earth since the old covenant was done and finalized not only by the death burial and resurrection of Jesus but also the, the destruction of Jerusalem 78 D made it apparent oh yes his spirit is a his spirit is a fervent heat or let's say everything was done by his spirit I enjoy your videos Jimmy peace okay so again this idea 70 AD comes from Daniel chapter 9 and it's predicated predicated on the idea that the temple was destroyed in 70 AD in Jerusalem and the Bible is quite clear that Jesus destroyed the temple he spoke of his body as the temple all right so anybody that preaches 70 AD is disregarding the sacrifice Jesus made for us all right completely disregarding nullifying the, the life and death of the Lord Jesus Christ it's astonishing that anybody would even suggest that idea and the Bible even warns us of these people and that I mean it's quite it's interesting it just to me it's interesting second Peter chapter 2 verse 18 who concerning the truth have erred saying that the res resurrection has or is past already who concerning the truth have erred saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some the resurrection already happened and that what that's exactly what Roderick is tinkering with and I know he he's promoting this idea but he don't he don't believe it I've known Roderick for too long to know that he doesn't believe this he's just echoing what other men have taught him he doesn't there's no way in the world anybody with a sound mind could believe this nonsense here that the resurrection has passed already and we are in a new heaven and a new earth right now all right so again let me just uh, so there's no confusion here he says 
Posting scripture you see in the text and other books, <clears throat> we are in the new heaven and new earth. Since the old covenant was done and finalized. Blah, 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 right? Roderick is saying we are in the new heaven and new earth. And he says that because that's what other men teach. Because they reject the death of Jesus Christ. And you know, just like the Muslims, they don't believe he died. All right? And it's very similar in the sense that uh, these people be don't believe the death of Jesus was the destruction of the temple. And of course, I mean, th there's it's so simple. Our body is the temple of God. and But our body is corrupted. So Jesus has come into our body, and he has destroyed this body, and then he has rebuilt a new temple. An incorruptible temple. All right. So now, we that follow him will follow him to this new temple that he has made for us. All right. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after this judgment, so we are appointed to die, and then he's going to return for us and receive us unto him, all of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, all of us that are born of God, all of us that follow him, will enter this new temple, will put on this new temple, this incorruptible, immortal body. All right, so it's pretty simple. It's, it's fantastic stuff, really. This here, the stuff that Roderick's, man, it's nonsense absolute nonsense so let's take a look are we let's ask the question because I think it's always fair to ask hard questions easy questions ask all questions answer all questions and consider all things right so we see or you see in the text and other books we are in the new heaven and the new earth so in Revelation 21 and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea alright so that's problem number one because um, that that hasn't happened yet we there are seas alright yeah I mean in order for this idea of preterism to work there has to be no more C. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't like, I really don't like to say people are stupid, but people that preach and teach and believe in preterism, they're not using any common sense, any logic at all. They are repeating what other men have taught, and they're making a mockery of the Word of God. All right, so now you have to take that out of your Bible if you're a preterist. Take that out, because that, that's going to hurt your your uh, little game that you're playing. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Uh, so again, this re reiterates or uh, you know uh, solidifies the idea, hey, the holy city of God is above. Just like what we re read in uh, John chapter 14 when Jesus says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go and prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. All right, so the, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. So that the... The city of God, Jerusalem, the new Jerusalem, it's above in heaven. It's not on earth. All right, so this idea that 70 AD destroyed something, no, it's nullified. Just, I mean, this, there's two right there, two consecutive verses that destroy preterism wholly and fully. And it, it makes it just seem like you're stupid. 
I, I, honest to God, how can you preach this idea that 70 AD had something to do with anything? And then read here in Revelation 21 and see that we have not entered the new heaven and the new earth. All right, we're, I don't put my hope into this world at all. This world is going to be destroyed. There's going to be a much better world to come. All right, and then it's as clear as day that the city of God is above and not over there in the Middle East. And so the, w anything that happened at all in 70 AD, it, irrelevant to the Word of God. Completely and wholly, totally irrelevant. has an, absolutely nothing to do at all. Because the holy city is above. Right? The holy city of God, this new Jerusalem, Jerusalem is above. Right? Jerusalem, which is above, is free and the mother of us all. Where am I at here? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Hold on a second. There it is. Verse 26. Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. And in the Revelation 21... And I, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, above, coming down from God out of heaven. Above. It's above, it's coming down. So it's not in the Middle East, obviously. And because it's not in the Middle East, the idea that it got destroyed, irrelevant. All right? it, completely, it has nothing at all to do with any scripture at all. And the only reason people teach it is to mock the Lord Jesus Christ and to suggest that Jesus didn't tear down the temple. That the temple was destroyed 37 years later in some dirty city that they call Jerusalem today. Alright, so John chapter 2, they didn't understand when Jesus said, 40... When Jesus said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And the Jews said, 46 years was this temple unbuilding, and what thou rear it up in three days? Are you out of your cotton-picking, stinking mind? But Jesus spoke of the, the temple as his body. Know ye not. that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. You are the temple of God and that when you are born of the Spirit the Spirit of God dwells in you and this temple has been destroyed. God has been manifest in the flesh and he destroyed this temple and then rebuilt a better temple a perfect temple an incorruptible temple all right, so I mean, it's it's amazing, incredible stuff. Of course, if you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not gonna see it. All right, so what else was there? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, and they shall be His people, and God Himself shall be with them, and be their God, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes." And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these words are true and faithful. Behold, I make all things new. So that's going to happen when? Uh, it's going to happen when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Notice here, <clears throat> excuse me, notice here it says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death. All right, there will be no 
more. God shall wipe away all tears, and there shall be no more death. Here in 1 Corinthians 15, we read all about that. And let me just read a few here and there, and let's, let's go. Uh, and now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? If, but if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith also in vain. Yeah, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified to God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ is not raised, your faith in vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they which also fall asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ at his coming. Then comes the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that is be, shall be destroyed is death. So here in Revelation 21, we read that God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. No sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Now let's, I want to just echo this again here, scroll down a little bit, I love this chapter here, this is good stuff. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, the last trump on the last day, and we are raised, right? We are raised, we are resurrected, and it's the judgment of God. It's the last day. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up. First the dead in Christ, and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord on this day. We are changed. Right? And then, when this happens... When this happens, right here, when this happens, then shall be brought the past the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. There is no more death. No more death, right? And the last enemy that is destroyed is death. Revelation 21, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. When? This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and the last enemy that is destroyed is death and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away there was no more sea and I John saw the holy city new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven Jesus says in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but I go and prepare a place for you that 
If I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. See? When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of this world. And Luke 21 says, Lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. We will be changed in a moment that twinkling an eye at the last trump, right? So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen.